Hello and welcome to this uh, video about uh, the great Sir George Allen Thomas, uh, a British player, one of the strongest British players in the uh, 1920s and 30s, twice British champion in 1923 and 1934, um, and a stalwart of the, uh, uh, of the British Olympiad team. Um, I'm going to be spending some time over the next few months looking at his uh, best games. Um, like um, uh, Fred Yates and uh, Henry Atkins, um, Sir George Thomas wasn't uh, a first-ranked player. Um, he wasn't one of the strongest players in the world, but he did play uh, play a part in many of the uh, of the great tournaments of um, of, of the twenties and thirties, and uh, and he was also strong enough to uh, to cause a number of upsets. Um, and the game that we're going to have a look at today is his game against uh, Jose Raúl Capablanca, ex world champion. Um, and the game that he actually beat him in. Um, and this was during the, the most wonderful tournament of his career when um, uh, Sir George Thomas came in equal first at the Hastings Premier in 1934-35 um, with Irva, soon to be world champion, uh, and Floor, who was, uh, well, really tipped at that time to be a, a future contender, if not world champion. And uh, ahead of uh, Botvinnik and um, uh, and Lilienthal and Capablanca, uh, and he beat Capablanca and Botvinnik in uh, in consecutive games. So it was a really amazing tournament. Um, and this was, yeah, I suppose the only time he beat Capablanca, he had a lot of draws or a number of draws um, and quite a few losses. Um, but uh, but this time he got him, and it was uh, it was actually a very good game. So Capablanca started with. Um, d4, knight f6, c4, e6, and we get to a uh, queen's gambit decline, a line that was very popular um, around that time. Uh, Fred Yates also played it uh, late in his career as well. Um, I suppose it followed the um, uh, the trend set by the uh, the Capablanca Alakin World Championship match in 1927, where these sort of lines were tested uh, ad infinitum. Um, one of the interesting things about uh, this early opening stage is that there's a sort of a battle for the tempo going on, as it was called. And uh, essentially black wants white to move his light square bishop and then black will take on c4. So black wants uh, white to waste the tempo taking on c4, spend two moves with his bishop taking on c4. Um, white on the other hand doesn't want that, he wants black to play d take c4 so that he can play bishop takes e4 in one go. Um, now, basically, what both sides are trying to do is to sort of make useful moves in the meantime um, and, uh, uh, and force the other person to do that. So, I mean, black often goes a6 and often throws in h6. Well, here white's played rook d1. He's also played, uh, he also played a3 a bit earlier, queen c2. Anything to avoid developing the bishop to f1. Now, however, um, Sir George takes a, um, well, a slightly committal decision, I suppose. He plays the move knight f8. Um, yeah, this keeps the, the tension in the centre and keeps that battle for the tempo going. But on the other hand, the knight is quite passively placed on, um, on f8. Um, it doesn't, I mean, on d7, it was supporting the, the c5 or the e5 breaks, which are black's main freeing breaks in this position. On f8, it's not doing anything like that. So I think that's why Capablanca here decided that, um, well, this move wasn't uh, an amazingly great move, so he might as well just get on with his development, develop his light squared bishop, and uh, give away the battle for the tempo, because, well, this knight f8 tempo that black has gained is actually not helping him to achieve any of his breaks. And he wants to achieve those freeing breaks, either e5 or c5, um, because, um, well, it's the only way that he's going to get his light squared bishop on c8. I'll just point to it there. Um, that's the only way that he's going to get that um, uh, that piece active. So after exchanging on c4, uh, Sir George exchange off a couple of pieces. Um, I'm sure Alakin would have played uh, this move, bishop f4, uh, which he liked to play. After knight takes f4, e takes f4. Um, White's claiming that um, that he's got a very nice clamp on uh, on the e5 square, which means that black will never play e6 to e5. And because black's exchanged off his knight on f6, it means that c5 can always be met by um, a move like d5. 
not exactly in this position, but uh, uh, you get the idea. Um, obviously, with a knight on f6 exchange, black's got a lot less um, uh, control over uh, the d5 square. So, uh, but Capablanca didn't uh, play like that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe out of principle, he didn't want to play a, an Alekin idea. After their world championship match, he didn't get on too well. So uh, he just took on e7, queen takes e7, castles. So George went b6 to put the bishop on b7, fairly normal plan. But here Capablanca played a, an interesting idea. He went knight e2. Uh, the idea is Capablanca wanted to play e4 and uh, gain a double pawn centre, but uh, he doesn't want black to exchange off any pieces because, uh, well, black's a little bit cramped. Um, um, obviously he's all back on his back three ranks and the more uh, pieces he has in his position, the, the less room he has for them and the less likely they are to be active. So this is quite a nice move, knight e2, and after bishop b7, e4, the knight has to retreat, and then Capablanca put his knight on g3. He could have put it back on c3, which would also have been a good idea, but um, here the idea is that uh, that knight on g3 is actually eyeing the f5 square. So if black ever tries to get in this move e6 to e5, um, then um, uh, white will actually be able to put his knight onto f5. Uh, the other idea is that if ever black goes c5, then white wants to play d5. I'll just show you how that uh, looks. So c5 and then d5. And then after e takes d5, um, this knight again on g3 is aiming for this f5 square. Um, what break? But what break does Black want to achieve? He wants to achieve the uh, the c5 break. So he starts um, uh, trying to prepare that, um, and also trying to minimise the effect of uh, d4 to d5 from White, because at the moment that would be quite a nasty move. So rook e d8, rook f e1. So c5 d5. I'll just show you that line. c5 d5 takes takes would now attack the queen on e7. Uh, so Sir George played rook a c8 just to support that. And here's quite an important moment. Actually, this is the moment where Capablanca really went horribly wrong. Um, I mean, Black's plan is just to get his queen out of the way, maybe to c7 uh, is the obvious square, and then play c5. Um, so, you know, White's got, to, has got a couple of moves, basically, to decide how to deal with that. Um, and Capablanca decided that he wanted to meet c5 with d5, which is fair enough. But he went about it in a very strange way. Um, to be honest, um, yeah, the natural move, the move you play in a blitz game, and then uh, really the natural move you'd expect Capablanca to play, is this move b4. Um, and after queen c7, we could play the same move that Capablanca played in the game and play queen a2. Um, the idea being that if black now plays c5, then I can take, take, and play d5. And this is very, very nice for white. Um, after e takes d5, e takes d5. Uh, well, first of all, blacks you know, had to accept a, an isolated c pawn on c5. Uh, secondly, this pawn on d5 is protected, and the white knight is heading for f5 as well. And we've also got ideas of just playing d6 and lining up on the f7 pawn. So this is actually very, it's very unpleasant for black. And uh, just this move b4, it um, um, it really clamps down on the on the um, uh, on the queen side. And for example, I mean, if black plays um, a move like I don't know something like h6, for example, then well, maybe white wouldn't do this immediately. There's no hurry. But he's got ideas like playing e5 and knight e4. Always a common idea in this position. The knight's aiming for d6, and it's also now together with the pawns on b4 and and uh, uh, d4 and b4. It's also clamping down on this c5 break. So basically, I mean, after this move, you know, white has a very nice advantage. Black's cramped, solid, but not very much to do. Well, Capablanca played um, a queen b3, which has got the idea of playing uh, um, d5 against c5, but um, it is a bit weird, and especially when you can continue with his next move, which after queen c7 was queen a2. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why Capablanca played this move. Um, I think, yeah, my personal guess is that he got a bit annoyed and he wanted, he decided, he realised he should have played b4 on the previous move and just said, OK, well, I'll get my queen out of the way. Now I'm going to play b4 and then everything's hunky-dory. Um, 
But this is actually a very bad move, and it turns position from yeah, little edge for white to um, uh, actually, well, almost clearly worse, actually. Um, the point is, you know, um, c5, as uh, Thomas played d5, and you've got to understand that meeting c5 with d5 is sharp. You know, I mean, you've got uh, um, one, two, three, oops, four black pieces attacking this pawn on d5. You know, and so there's definite tension when you enter that uh, that area. So you've got to make sure that black hasn't got um, any extra counter chances. And well, I imagine that um, uh, the Capablanca missed this idea, b5, knocking away the bishop on b on, on c4 from the defence of d5. So he's actually going to swap off his um, his b his b pawn for white's d pawn, which is uh, you know a pretty good deal basically. And um, actually, this queen on a2 is is causing all sorts of horrible problems. For example, after bishop b5, e takes d5, e takes d5, bishop takes d5. Then we're attacking the queen on a2, bishop c4, and then bishop f3. G takes and knight g6. And as I explained in my uh, blog, look at it in a lot more detail, but this knight coming to h4, attacking f3, is a very unpleasant uh, position. It's very hard to get rid of that knight on h4. Um, so actually after, um, in this position, um, yeah, white's definitely in a bit of trouble. Now what I thought maybe white should have done was to play this move d6. Um, queen b6, bishop f1, and uh, well, white's going to try and follow up with e5. Um, but white's fishing in troubled waters here. I mean, it's, um, I thought after c4, analyzing more detail on my blog, um, but I thought after c4, you know, white is in trouble. I mean, look at that queen on a2, really a, a terrible piece, you know. Amazing that Capablanca has allowed his pieces to get in that sort of position because, uh, well, he had this wonderful feel for uh, for placing his pieces harmoniously. But uh, but here he, uh, he went completely wrong. And I think, uh, but I think that, yeah, probably Capablanca was a bit in panic here or didn't take the time to um, to reflect because he now, he carried on with a sequence of, of poor moves. Um, e5, which I think is worse than e takes d5. Uh, knight e4, and now he took, which is really, really bad. Um, I mean, black stands very well after knight e4. He's going to play knight g6 or e6, and that e5 pawn is very weak. But this is just tactically uh, tactically horrible. Um, knight d2 was what he played. I mean, I imagine that he was expecting he could play knight g5, but this is extremely unpleasant for um, uh, for white. I mean, this pawn on c4 cuts out the queen on a2. Bishop b5 is hanging and queen takes c5 is coming in. And that knight on g5 has got very few squares. On top of that, white, black's also got the idea of playing uh, e4 to e3. Um, uh, which is going to weaken the white king side and open up that a8 h1 diagonal for the um for the bishop so it's really uh it's a very grim position actually even worse than it looks um well capablanca didn't want to do that um but what he did was um was horrific too he went knight d2 um and now actually uh sir george had two ways uh to win um to be honest queen a5 was even stronger it does just pick up a piece um uh, Forks bishop on b5, knight on d2. I mean, white can try and uh, do some stuff like this. But the key point is that after e6, you can just play bishop d5. Um, attacking the queen on a2, um, attacking the uh, the pawn on e6. And there's a big problem that if, if you play something like this, you know, trying to uh, get some sort of weird compensation for, uh, for all your sacrifice material, then the back rank and the rook on e1 kills you. So, um, uh, I mean, there really is nothing for uh, for White to do. Um, what Sir George did was um, uh, safer, I suppose, um, and also winning, but um, just uh, meant, meant that there was a little bit more to do. Um, and here Capablanca began to uh, to dig in a little bit, and I guess Sir George got a little nervous. I'll just whiz through the game, the moves a little bit. Um, Queen e7, queen d4, h6, all, all good. Black, Black's got uh, his pieces out of the way and uh, um, now basically he's going to aim to uh, to come back. I mean, round up that e5 pawn. a3, of course, is hanging as well. Um, here there was a little mistake. I mean, I think queen g5 um, here would have been quite nice. 
it threatens e3 and you're just going to go knight e6 rook c2 at some stage um it's very dangerous this is really a a, a nasty position for uh, for white uh, queen d6 is a little bit um uh, gives white a little bit of relief and in general when you see this that you're not going to win the e5 pawn then you think well this is maybe going to take some time i mean if white could uh, double up on the a file for example and attack that a7 pawn it might be nasty um but actually ar around here sir george starts playing quite calmly quite quite well um it he's not making fast progress but um um he is just starting to uh to keep the white pieces at bay um rook f4 i don't like very much really i have to say um that uh, that rook does not have much mobility and um here this is actually a very nice uh, a very nice little idea rook c8 I'm not quite sure what, what, what he was intending but it does set a very nice trap um if white plays rook d7 then knight g6 is horrific um this rook on f4 is very short of squares and um if rook g4 for example then bishop e6 very cheeky little trap and um uh, Capablanca reacted with uh, rook a6 which looks very natural but um here too he's uh, he's in trouble uh, because sir george found this very nice idea and this rook on a6 is in big trouble um if rook a4 then you play a5 and the rook doesn't have that many squares um uh, and actually the computer evaluation is starting to, to drop at this point now and uh um it got actually worse because um uh so george does continue quite calmly with this rook f5 bishop e6 rook f4 and rook c4 and here i guess to his horror capablanca realized that um the rook on a6 really is trapped uh, black's going to follow up with bishop c8 just winning the rook so um a very very nice uh, idea here i haven't seen this motif uh, it really feels like trapping the rook on a on a pretty open board you know when 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 white's actually got two rooks i mean it's not like white's got no material whatsoever so um uh, the game now well it's basically over um it finished off like this king f6 and capablanca had had enough that pawn on a3 is going and if a4 then bishop d7 will pick it up so he resigned um yeah, I mean, you can say that Capablanca played uh, some poor moves, but um, um, actually, I think Black played played this game very, very well. Um, I, you know, I think um, yeah, this this move, Queen B three and Queen A two, um, was not very good. But the the refutation was was not obvious, and um, you know, and I, I think um, um, Capablanca would really have had to dig in deep um, and really take this seriously in order to find some sort of uh, defense. He didn't, um, you know. I think he played some quite careless moves from this stage, and after here, yeah, he was completely lost. And uh, I think you know, Sir George t chose the the safest way of playing. And although he didn't, um, he didn't make the very best uh, technical job of it. Um, just around move thirty five, he started playing playing well again and uh, keeping the position under control and just uh, you know taking the long view. I think that was the thing. There was not, not going to be any hurry. He was just going to start driving white's pieces back and uh he found some very nice little um little trap ideas and uh and finished capablanca off in a in a very good way so very good uh a very good victory and uh, the next round uh we'll have a look at this game as well uh in a, in a subsequent video he beat botvinik um so i mean capablanca and botvinik in successive games not bad going and there he was leading the um the hastings premier this enormously strong tournament with three out of three so there we are, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, well, take a look at my blog for a bit more detailed analysis on the whole game, and uh, well, keep watching this space for more videos. Thanks very much.